Hey guys, today we're going to talk about exercise induced asthma. And it's a condition, it's an asthmatic condition where your air, airways will actually narrow or constrict during hard physical activity. Now, it isn't just for patients that are actually diagnosed asthmatics, although 90% of asthmatics will get this or have this, but you can see this in patients that don't have many breathing issues at all, but the exercise will bring it on. You will notice it more because when you exercise, you start breathing through your mouth. And when you're breathing through your mouth, you're breathing in more cold and drier air than you normally would breathe when it goes through your nose where it's actually moistened and warmed by your nostrils. So that is one of the things that actually exacerbates it is the increased mouth breathing. And that's one thing to think about as you're exercising or doing activities is ways to reduce the amount of breathing through your mouth that's going on and trying to breathe more through your nose. The symptoms that you will have when this occurs are you'll see shortness of breath, chest tightness, coughing, wheezing, chest pain too, so you want to watch out with that because obviously you can be looking at a heart issue too. So. Of course, if there's any doubt at all, get to a provider right away. Fatigue and poor athletic performance. You're not going to be able to perform like you would if you didn't have this. The cause is actually unknown. However, like I said, dry air, cold air can bring it on more often than not. Other things that can bring it on are chemicals. So if you're out with a lot of pollution, that can bring it on. If you're swimming in a pool that has a lot of chlorine in it, especially in the air around the pool, that can bring it on. If you're in an area or a gym where there's been a lot of new paint, that also can bring it on. So that's something to look at as well. As far as risk factors, like I said, 90% of asthmatics will actually have this. However, another risk factor, which was kind of weird for me, is patients that are elite athletes are going to be more prone to have this. They don't know why, but it is a condition that is seen in elite athletes. So that, that's another risk factor for you. As far as if you're an asthmatic, it can be serious if it's not dealt with. And so if you're having an attack and you're not getting relief from your rescue inhaler, get to a provider of the emergency room right away, especially if you're seeing things that are triggered in your as asthma plan as you're going downhill to a place you don't want to be. Don't hesitate. Let your exercise partner know. Let a coach, let a teacher know. Let them get the help that you're going to need. The main thing that you actually see, and this happens, like I said, mainly in asthmatics, is when the exercise triggers this, people don't want to exercise because they don't want to go through an exacerbation. They don't want to go through the chest pain, the cough, the wheezing associated with it. So they avoid exercise. Well, that's not good either because then you see mental things that go on with it, like anxiety like depression, as well as weight gain, muscle loss, easily becoming fatigued, and not building your lungs up in itself, which you need to do as an asthmatic patient. Now, generally, when you're doing these, when you're having exercise, you're, you're pushing yourself like this, you're going to see the symptoms occur within the first 5 to 15 minutes of exercise. But... Once you quit, especially if you're doing something like in a burst, like maybe if you're uh, playing baseball and you run around the bases or you go to make a catch, you can see an exercise-induced asthmatic episode occur five to ten minutes after you quit. So remember that. 
Keep that in mind and always have your inhaler handy. For treatment of this, number one treatment, get good control of your asthma on a daily basis. If you have a daily controlled inhaler like Simbacort, Adbear, Q-Bar, or the generic equivalents, Asmanex, use those every day to get in control. Also, have your backup handy. If you have a backup as needed, albuterol inhaler, keep it in your gym bag. Make sure it's with you at all times during your exercise because you may need it. The other thing is, you can use that inhaler, even though you don't need it, 15 minutes prior to your exercise or your game or whatever, and it will help out. You also can use a mast cell stabilizer like chromalin 15 minutes prior by nebulizer, and it will help out. Ipratropium is another drug 15 minutes prior by nebulizer that can also help out as well. Something else as far as tips and tricks you can do, warm up for five to 10 minutes before your game or before you start your exercise program. Make sure you're stretched out, make sure you get some nice good breathing going and that will help you out. Exercise indoors, especially if it's cold outside. Now, if it's cold inside as well, Wear a mask or a scarf around your mouth and nose to help warm up that breath and to help out with any air pollutants that might be out there. If you're sick or having issues with allergies at that time, don't work out because you're already going to be more prone to having an asthmatic attack. If the pollen or pollution is high, the air quality is bad, the pollen count is high, don't exercise outside. Try and stay inside to do that. Make sure your exercise partners or teammates or coaches know that you have exercise-induced asthma. In case you have a severe attack, they can get you where you need to be. Also let them know that you have a rescue inhaler available. That's important. Then, avoid activities where you're going to have prolonged mouth breathing, long distance running, soccer, field hockey, basketball. Those kind of sports are going to have an increased amount of mouth breathing. Does it mean that you, can, you can't do them as an asthmatic? No, it doesn't. I know all kinds of asthmatics that are great athletes in those sports that I just mentioned. But it means you've got to be aware of your limitations and be in control of your asthma before you start those activities and have your rescue inhaler on hand. If you don't have good asthmatic, asthmatic control, stick to sports like swimming, walking, wrestling, volleyball, basketball, or excuse me, not basketball, baseball, softball, things like that that you can still do, enjoy, build up your lung stamina, build up your physical stamina by doing them without putting yourself at risk for an asthmatic attack. Remember, it's anything that you're using your mouth more to breathe in that's going to make you more prone to having an attack. But by all means, exercise.